Hello! <laughs> this is Piper J. Drake and it's been a while since I've done a live video. So I'm kind of flustered because I'm like, what was I going to talk about? What was I going to say? But first of all, happy Saturday. It's been a week. So I'm really happy to be here on the weekend uh, and have the chance to kind of reset and also focus on um, my edits because really right now priority for me on the weekend is working through my edits for Fierce Justice which is the fifth book in the True Hero series Romantic Suspense and I'm uber excited because I love this heroine and I love this hero um, so I was like, well, what can I do? Because I'm having a little trouble shaking off the day job this week, uh, just because there was a lot of things going on and a lot of things that I'm thinking about. So I wanted to like, reset my brain. And I thought, what better way to do it than to do a Facebook Live and talk about editing in general and also uh, maybe some specifics about editing um, Fierce Justice. So it's been a little while since I've done a Facebook Live. I'm all sorts of trying to figure out how to juggle the thing, uh, but I also want to make sure that I can see if there are any questions and stuff. So I'm bringing the video up on a separate laptop. And of course there's lag and there's that weirdness of seeing myself on the screen, but this way at least I'll be able to see questions as they go. Um, so here we go. Uh, hopefully, I don't know, it's a Saturday. This was kind of impromptu, so there wasn't a lot of warning that I was going to be doing this. Uh, but if you have a chance, please share out and invite a couple of your friends to join and watch this live or catch me later after live's over and still put in comments and that's always cool too. I'll try to come back and answer any questions in the comments after this video goes live. Um, but let's talk editing. For me in particular, I face a couple of different challenges with editing um, because I have a day job and I travel a lot for my day job. Sometimes as much as 85% of my time is at airports or in hotels or traveling around for my day job. And um, so that being the case, I can't kind of have a static setup. Uh, some things that you can do to really uh, get a good handle over your edits, especially when they're the, the broad developmental edits where you're kind of taking broad strokes to try to um, address certain things and polish your book up in certain ways uh, to make it flow better or make the pacing better or bring certain aspects of the story out more that you wanted to that maybe my draft sucked and didn't really do well the first time. Uh, sometimes uh, some things that uh, I'll want to do is like take my plot and put it up in stickies all up on a wall so I can see it so I can be like okay in general I wanted to do this and maybe here's a good place for me to be able to do that or here's a good place for me to add a little bit of detail or here's a place to add more context or even more interesting is when I want to feather in details throughout the book um, it really helps to see the plot up on a big wall or something but if I'm traveling I can't really do that. I've tried the collapsible dry erase boards that I can take my plot with me and then like fold it down and pack it. And then shenanigans happen where the sticky notes fall off and everything and or like the marker, the dry erase marker smears. So that hasn't worked for me. Um, another thing that I do right now that's been working the most is having traveler's journals. And what I use with traveler journals is I have um, kind of a cute light canvas style traveler's journal and in it I have several different inserts and usually one is the book that I'm editing, one is for ideas and then one end is like my priority and that's usually the one I'm working on right now. Currently for Fierce Justice I have my traveler's insert from when I was doing my draft and I'm looking at the wrong side of my phone so I'm like not quite looking into the camera, my bad. Um, and in it, what I have is a chapter per page plotted out from after I plotted it up on a wall. So at least this way, even though it's not spread out someplace where I can see it big, I can flip through and quickly reference kind of what was supposed to be going on in my story at a certain time to be able to address like those big, broad developmental edits. Um, and yes, it's color coded. Uh, my color coding isn't consistent from book to book. 
I have a tendency to just grab what post-its are available and sometimes I'm kind of maybe nipping them from whatever office I'm in. Most of the time I buy them, especially when they're the really cool colors. Purple seems to be really difficult for me to find, so I tend to order that in like cakes of sticky notes from Amazon. Um, but yeah, so this is the way I travel with my plot, both to uh, draft and then later to come back on the developmental edits. I don't generally use this in later rounds of edits for the finer tuning of like wordsmithing at the line edit level or copy edits. I very rarely come back to this, but for the first developmental pass, this is a lifesaver. Um, another challenge I have is dealing with multiple projects. Um, my brain just works way too fast sometimes, and so I find myself, um, you know, receiving edits when I'm in the middle of drafting something else. and. Um, I think I handle it different every single time it comes up because sometimes, especially if timing will allow, I, um, I set the work that's drafting aside so I can focus on edits and just work on my edits and reacquaint myself to the book that I need to edit um, first and then kind of just make sure that I do stay in the same story, stay in the same head. Um, this time, I'm not sure if that's working for me because as I'm working through edits on Fierce Justice, which is a romantic suspense, I keep pinging back to, oh, maybe I should write this note down. Maybe I should write this note down for the book that I'm drafting, which is a short novella. Um, and it's actually an urban fantasy. And that might be the difference because they are um, different genres. Uh, but um, the urban fantasy that I'm currently working on is a novella called Sirens Calling. It's mermaids! And um, I'm working on that in a collaboration with an awesome, awesome group of authors. The first in that set of series of novellas, it's a series of six novellas coming out, all original novellas on mermaids. Um, and the first of it is Siren's Tide, and that's already out there, available for you all if you want to buy it. It's by Philippa Ballantyne, and um, I'll drop the link in the comments after the video. I think I will try to do that uh, for you if you want to click on it, but the premises were urban fantasy. The mermaids left the earth hundreds of years ago, but now they've returned, and in each of the six novels you get to meet different one of the Sea King's daughters and why they're here and what they're doing. Um, uh, mine, Siren's Calling, is coming out in September and so I'm still drafting the novella right now and then it'll go through editing and my target was to have the novella drafted uh, in mid-July. And then these edits hit, which I knew were coming and honestly I tend to prefer to make my contracted trad publishing books the priority because they are contracted with harder deadlines. Usually uh, self-pub work for me is a little bit more flexible. Uh, so in this case, the edits for Fierce Justice still take priority, um, but I'm finding myself looking at the edits and still thinking about drafting this book. So it's not going to work for me to just focus on the edits and power through until I'm done and then go back to drafting. Um, I already tried to stop and take those little notes so they're out of my head um, for the drafting, but I'm not sure that's gonna work either. So I might do something that I've never done before, which is, you know, start out my working day or my working session for writing by editing a portion of uh, Fierce Justice in Romantic Suspense and um, maybe hit a specific target, like I want to edit two chapters today, or I want to edit four chapters today, or I want to address this thing by adding more context in this way. Uh, and once I finish that as a reward, I might take a break, go take a walk, go take a shower, whatever it takes to set my brain back up again, and then let myself draft on Siren's Calling, um, which is never worked for me before to work on two different stories in the same day. but. I'm going to give it a try because that might be what it takes for me this time around. It's different every time I'm working on different books and different sets of edits. Um, so I'm going to give that a go. 
uh, I will say that uh, I will be doing a talk with Asa Marie Bra Maria Bradley. Blah, 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 blah. Asa, please forgive me. I totally skipped, stumbled through your name and I apologize. Uh, but the two of us are doing a workshop at RWA National next month on not just project management for writers, but also program management for writers in which a program you think of as having multiple projects that you're managing and how do you juggle them? How do you manage them? How do you deal with things like this going in parallel? So the situation I'm in right now where I have edits to do, but I also in parallel have drafting to do and how I'm approaching it, there's a lot of different approaches to it. Um, and I try to stay really agile and, and just figure out what I'm going to do and what feels best for this time. Uh, so some of those topics are going to come up in our workshop. Um, probably going to add it in as uh, sort of case studies. Um, but either way, that should be a fun workshop, especially on managing your time. Thank you for watching. Hi. <laughs> um, and I think that's Marcella. Hi, thank you for joining. Uh, in any case, um, so I'm looking forward to doing that workshop with Asa Maria Bradley. I'll also be doing another workshop at RWA National, which is working through distractions. And I'll be working on that workshop with Gail Carriger and Katie Robert. Hi, Lynn. Thank you for joining. <laughs> uh, so uh, the working through distraction, obviously, uh, Gail, Katie, and I each bring a different perspective on working through the kinds of distractions and we each face different distractions uh, depending on our workspaces. Um, I travel a huge amount so obviously there's a huge amount of distraction and disturbance just in the fact that I don't really have a stable place where I work all the time for my writing and my editing. Uh, Gail travels quite a lot at least once a month um, and then she also has a specific office that she works in so she has different kinds of distractions that she handles and Katie works um, a lot from her home and she has these amazing posts um, where you just kind of have to they're amazingly humorous they're hilarious uh, about um, her honey badger uh, toddler and the things that he gets up to in the home and how she manages to write or even keep her sanity or keep any hair on her head I have no idea so I'm really looking forward to her bringing that part of it to the workshop and and being able to write um, when life hits you with incredible disruptions and distractions. So that's the second workshop that we're doing at RWA National. Um, but obviously with those two major workshops going on, I'm going to want to make sure to get these edits done. Um, and like I said, it seems like my usual approach to edits, which is to focus on them and set any other project aside and just really power through the edits so I can really focus on the book, isn't working for me. Um, so we're going to try this thing where I give dangle a carrot to myself and, um, work on a target set of edits. Hi Jane. Thank you. I like my lamp too. <laughs> and hi Abby. Thank you for joining. Um, so this might be a little repetitive, but I just want to, for the people who are joining us, um, I, I have to say that I'm looking forward to giving myself that reward of editing a certain target amount per day and then rewarding myself by letting myself kind of uh, run around, reset my brain, and then be able to draft my other project. And it is kind of awkward balancing two different projects. But on top of that, I'm also keeping in mind as I go through my edits for Fierce Justice uh, a couple of considerations. And there are things that I always meant to do on my previous books and I never remembered to do it. But this time I'm going to remember. Um, is that as I go through edits, if I particularly find a good passage, I'm going to copy it over to another file um, to give to uh, all of you as like teasers and quotes and excerpts uh, as we get closer to Fierce Justice releases, especially for like any blog tours that I might do or any interviews. So bloggers, I'm preparing for you. In my edits, I'm trying to remember and tag different spots in my book that'll make awesome excerpts and awesome quotes and snippets to share with all of my readers to help you look forward to Fierce Justice. And additionally, I'm also taking notes because Be Fierce Justice is the fifth book in the True Hero series. I am working on the sixth book. There's gonna be a sixth book. 
to True Heroes. And that is going to be, I believe, the title right now. You know, that's always subject to change. But right now, it's Forever Strong. And Forever Strong, uh, I'll be drafting uh, after I get back from RWA, RWA National. And so I'm taking a couple of notes to remember. Yes, Jane, I'm glad you're excited. Uh, so I will be working on Forever Strong through the fall. And um, hopefully all of you are going to be excited. This is interesting with Forever Strong because a lot of my canine heroes uh, in the True Heroes books have been either Belgian Malinois or a lot of German Shepherd dogs. My heart goes to the German Shepherd dogs. It really does. But the canine in Forever Strong is a Rhodesian Ridgeback, which is another breed of amazing, awesome dogs. Um, kind of unusual, but totally, totally have the skill sets for search and rescue. Uh, so Buck is going to be an interesting research topic, and my hero, who works with Buck, is dreamy, amazing, oh my gosh. I can't, like, so he is the leader of the Search and Protect Corporation, Zoo. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with him, He's getting his story. It's going to be great. But there are teasers to Forever Strong in Fierce Justice. And I have a question from Jane. She says, ooh, wait, didn't you have one of those in the novella that you did in that recent anthology? Uh, I had... A, yeah, I had a Ridgeback, but it was a Thai Ridgeback, Jane. Oh my gosh, awesome memory. Yes, and actually that's an awesome segue. Um, so subscribers to my newsletter got access to Finding His Mark, which is the novella that Jane is referring to. And uh, Finding His Mark is right here. And I'm going to have these postcards with me at RWA National. And you can see there's a link to claim it as a free read. Oh, I'm glad, Jane, that you love this story. Ah, so in there, as they mention, as she's mentioning, um, my heroine is an assassin, and she's hiding out in Thailand because of reasons. And um, she has a Thai Ridgeback. Now, Thai Ridgebacks are also really cool to me because, um, as some of you might know, I am from Thailand. Uh, both my parents are from Thailand and immigrated here. And I was born here, but I spent my childhood summers back in Thailand spending time with my grandparents and my uncles and aunts. Um, and so Thailand has a special place in my heart. And the Thai Ridgeback is this awesome, great dog. Um, it can come in a couple of different colors, but uh, the my favorite color is that copper colored dog. And the characteristic about Ridgebacks in general and Thai Ridgebacks is that they've got hair that's going in the opposite direction to the rest of their fur along their spine. That's the Ridgeback. Uh, so yes, Finding His Mark features a Thai Ridgeback. And yes, <laughs> the heroine in Finding His Mark was definitely badass. She was definitely badass in all sorts of ways. And I love her. Um, and I think you'll find that Fierce Justice uh, the heroine in that book is also a badass in different ways, obviously, because she's a different person. Um, but uh, Zoo has a Rhodesian Ridgeback. So we're getting a little bit dicey with the, with the breeds here, guys. Stick with me. <laughs> uh, but dogs, so many awesome, awesome dogs. Um, but as I mentioned, I will have these cards for free reads with me at RWA National. Um, you may see some of these out at other reader events. Joyful Reviewed has quite a bunch of them in case you want to check me out for those who haven't read it, read it before. Jane's a subscriber on my newsletter, and as she can tell you, my newsletter describer, subscribers get the first of everything. Uh, so what I might do for you here in the video is I'm going to try to do this and talk at the same time. This may or may not work out well. Uh, is post a link right now. And if you subscribe to my newsletter using this link right now, you'll get a uh, free copy of Finding His Mark, since we just talked about it. Um, set in Thailand, badass heroine, Thai Ridgeback dog, come on. And the cover is pretty hot, I would say. Uh, so there you go. And Jane, thank you for remembering. Ah, I'm so glad that you enjoyed that book. Um, so what else is next? Let's talk about RWA for a second, shall we? Um, so RWA National is uh, coming right around the corner, and I'm very excited to go because I haven't been since it was in Atlanta, so gosh, like five or six years ago maybe? 
uh, and I just really, really enjoy RWA National. It's a little bit different because I don't get as much uh, engagement or, or chances to re meet new readers, uh, although some readers do attend RWA National. It's much more of a kind of um, meeting of creative minds, talking to other authors, seeing how people are doing, seeing what new ideas, new approaches they're taking. Um, so I'm looking forward to it from that angle. And as I mentioned, I am presenting two workshops, uh, but I'm also signing. And one of the things that I am actually really, really kind of interested to see how it goes is Karina Press, which is um, digital imprint of Harlequin, is holding a signing and open house. So you don't have to be attending the RWA National Convention in Denver to be able to attend Karina Press's open house, which is taking place in the Harlequin Editorial Suite or Terrace Room at the Sheraton Downtown Denver Hotel on um, Thursday, July 19th, and it'll be starting at 10 a.m. and it'll be going to about 11.30. I have to pop out a little bit early, so I'll only be there from about 10 to 11-ish, but I will be signing print copies of Contracted Defense, and I'm so excited. So yes, you can get print copies of Contracted Defense from the Karina Press signing uh, Thursday, July 19th, in Sheraton, Denver. And look, do you hear that? Pages flipping, I love it. Um, I will also be signing Total Bravery with Grand Central Publishing Forever. Uh, directly after that, I don't know the room, but it should be in the same hotel in Sheraton downtown. Um, but I will be signing Total Bravery as well at RWA National, so I'll have that with me. I know, Jane, it's such a good book noise. Um, so Total Bravery will also be something I'm signing. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with RWA, they also have a literacy signing, Readers for Life Literacy Autographing on Saturday. And this goes to good cause because any proceeds from the book sales there uh, go to literacy organizations. And I will also be signing both of these at the literacy uh, signing on Saturday in Denver. So some of the things that I'll have with me. I mean, I hope I see some of you there at RWA National. If not, I am trying to get back out there to some of the cons that are out there. Um, <clears throat> some of those cons this year will be the Fresh Fiction Readers and Readers um, event, as well as ECWC up in the Seattle area later this year. And I also am going to be attending several events early next year. Uh, those include Wild Wicked Weekend. That'll be my first time at that event. I hear it's crazy pants. We'll see if I can be wild enough for the event. Do you think I can be saucy enough? I think I can try to be saucy enough. Um, so Wild Wicked Weekend, which is I think in February, the tail end of February. And then I'm also going to be at a Polycon in DC and I am so excited to be a part of that event also. Also a first time for me, and oh my gosh, a Polycon's going to be amazing. Uh, but one of the cool things about a Polycon that you can look at starting, I think, this fall is that there will be a virtual signing for those who can't come to the Polycon event in person. You'll be able to actually order my books through the Polycon virtual signing. And when I'm at a Polycon, I'll make special time to go down and sign books that people order through the virtual signing, and those will be shipped to you with my signature. So you can actually order signed books by me through the Apolicon virtual signing. So definitely come and check my Facebook page for those details as well. I'm really, really excited uh, to be a part of Apolicon. So I hope I'll see you there, but if not, definitely check out the virtual signing to be able to get signed copies. I think they're also adding personalizations back this year. I'm not really sure how that works yet, um, but that way you know, like I signed it specifically for you. So there's that. Do we have any questions out there? If not, um, I'm not sure what else to chat about and I should get back to my edits <laughs> because, oh my gosh, Fierce Justice, I love this book. I'm telling you, I, I one of the things that's awesome about coming back and editing is I've had some time away from the draft, so I'm able to clear my head of anything I was worried about. Oh, Sarah, thank you for joining. You'll be at Akali Khan? That's awesome. I'm so looking forward to seeing people there. 
Um, so I think, yeah, I'll have Fierce Justice at a Polycon too. I had to stop and pause and think about that. But Fierce Justice releases in February. So I will have Fierce Justice at a Polycon as well. And uh, wow, I'm just looking forward with all of the events that I'm doing next spring. Um, and I am confirmed for one more, but I'm not announcing it yet. So maybe I'll do a future Facebook Live when it's, I'm able to announce it, but it's not public yet. So there is one other event. I'm doing Wild Wicked Weekend in February. I'm doing a Polycon, and I think a Polycon's in March. I need to check my calendar. I did all the things. I've got the hotel and stuff for it. I just need to check my calendar. Hi, Missy. So I will be in DC in Marchish. And then I have a third event, which I will confirm at some later time through social media. I don't know if it'll be through another Facebook Live or if it'll be somewhere else, but you'll see it, especially if you check here on my Facebook page. Um, <clears throat> but in the meantime, I probably should get back to editing Fierce Justice, especially since it does release in February. Uh, and that seems like a far way away, but these are developmental edits. I want to get them done before RWA Nationals next month um, so that I can really focus on RWA Nationals and not have that like glazed over author look that sometimes happens. <laughs> um, and I just really, really, I, I just love Fierce Justice. So I really want to do this hero and this heroine and this canine dog justice. That seems redundant with the title being Fierce Justice, but you know what I mean, right? Uh, in any case, if there aren't any more questions, I'm going to wrap up for the time period. And Kara's, hi, how are you? I love how you're laughing at me because it really is kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> I will have a blast in Denver. Thank you, Jane. I'm actually catching up with a bunch of people there, both authorly people who are going to be at RWA National and a couple of writer friends who actually live in Denver. So I'll be catching up with them and... Um, grabbing dinner with them. And also Gail Carriger, shout out to Gail, has a book signing on Tuesday for anybody who's arriving early. Um, she has a book signing for Constance, I think. I would have to double check the book. Um, but that book signing is on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, so I may be popping over there uh, to see Gail, see how she's doing, and um, also lend her my fangirl support uh, when it comes to her book signing. So again, for those of you who will be at RWA Nationals, I will be signing at the Karina Press, uh, signing an open house. And remember, the open house means that you don't have to be attending RWA National to be able to go to that open house. And that's Thursday, July 19th at 10 a.m. Uh, and then directly after that. <laughs> um, sorry, I just paused because <clears throat> Kara was saying that she's laughing at the glazed author explanation. It is. It's this like thing <laughs> that happens. And um, I apologize if I mention, if I uh, pronounce your name incorrectly, but I think Keshav Mishra is uh, saying hi. So hello, thank you for joining me. Um, I was just in the middle of going over uh, where I was signing. So that was the Korean Press signing Thursday, July 19th at 10 a.m. And directly following that, I will be scampering, literally scampering over to the Grand Central Publishing Forever signing uh, somewhere else in the hotel on July 19th, Thursday at 11 a.m. Uh, and I will have with me Contracted Defense for Karina Press, Total Bravery for Forever. And just in general, if you see me running around the convention, you can get one of these for a free read of Finding His Mark if you haven't got it yet. And for those of you who are viewing and just joined us, I put a link earlier in the video stream um, so that you could get Finding, Your Mark, Finding His Mark um, right here just from watching the Facebook Live. And hopefully... You'll subscribe to my newsletter because that's really where you get the first of everything. All the freebies, all of the insider nut stuff, and all of the things about what's going on with Corbin and me and my books. And also Piper Intel because on my newsletter is where I let you know about things that I haven't mentioned anywhere else online. So you get the Piper Intel in the newsletters and I make sure that everyone comes up. And I see Gail has joined us. Hi, Gail! Um, so... Overall, though, I am wrapping up. Uh, I've got to get back to editing Fierce Justice. And as I said, I'm also going to be working on Siren's Calling as my reward if I finish my targets each day for my edits on uh, 
fierce justice. And we'll see how it goes. It may completely, completely fail this approach. I've never tried it before, but since I can't get sirens calling out of my mind, I figured this way I could focus on my edits and then reward myself with the drafting. And that way I get to work on both projects that I equally am really, really excited about at the moment and hopefully get them done before RWA. And yes, Gail, I'll see you there at RWA. Um, and all of you, I mentioned it earlier, but I'll mention it again. Gail and I are doing a workshop along with Katie Robert Hurd on working through distractions and disruptions. Uh, so come check us out. I believe our session, our workshop is on Thursday in the afternoon. So my Thursday's a busy Thursday. Um, and that's about it. I think I'll wrap up there. And uh, Corbin's napping over there. Otherwise, I'd call him over to say hi to you all. But he is out cold sleeping on his back on the ground over there. Dog's life is tough. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Have a happy Saturday. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.